Well, we just had our first real blast of winter, which means I'm in the mood for some hot cocoa. Today on Mark Tastes Random Things, we're trying some Gourmand du Village hot cocoa. Just eat it, eat it, eat it. Get yourself an egg and beat it. Have some more chicken, have some more pie. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Cap is here with another installment of Mark Tastes Random Things. I have been plotting this one for quite some time, and as I said in my intro, we just had our first real blast of winter. It's the first full weekend in November, it's been snowing non-stop for like three days now, so now's the time to break into the hot cocoa. Now, I've been curious about this one kind of hot cocoa for a while now. It's called Gourmande du Village. Perhaps you've seen it. They are quite common in, like, gift stores. I've seen them in Bed Bath & Beyond. They're really tiny, unique flavors of hot chocolate. And yeah, one little single serve packet. I've given them out as stocking stuffers myself, but it just occurred to me that I've never actually tried them myself. So I think I should. Rather than hit up any gift shop I could, I realized I could just go online to Amazon and buy each packet I wanted for like 99 cents each. So that's exactly what I've done. And now we are going to spend a lovely week enjoying some of this Gourmet du Village hot chocolate. That's the name, right? Yep. Gourmet du Village. I believe I said Gourmand du Village. Probably just saw a little too much ratatouille. But yeah, let's start making some hot cocoa, shall we? So we're starting things off with uh, the one that always caught my eye and the one I always wanted to try, the green hot chocolate with that happy little T-Rex on the package. Uh, the package says that it is a white hot chocolate. So yeah, I'm expecting something that tastes like white chocolate with a whole ton of green food coloring in it to make it green. So I know what you're probably thinking, Mark, are you actually shining a flashlight on this so it'll be lit better? Yes, yes I am. The second thing you're probably thinking, Mark, did you go buy a glass mug just for this little video? Yes, yes I did. Now that your questions are answered, let's get to it. Firstly, I'm gonna to have to turn off the flashlight so I can use both hands now. I forgot to get a spoon for mixing the hot chocolate, so I'm gonna get that now. We have a spoon, okay. Smells like white chocolate. There we go. Now they say the best way to make hot chocolate is with milk instead of water. So here I've got this mug of warm milk straight from the microwave. Oh, that's a lovely mess, isn't it? That is a fantastic mess I just made. But as we can see, it is starting to turn green. Let's stir it all together. That is a nice pale green for hot cocoa. That's not too bad. A nice Irishy green. I was gonna grab a rag and clean things up right away here. There we go. We got our nice green hot chocolates. Let me get the flashlight here so we can light that up nice for you. There we are. See how nice and greeny that is? Yeah. But the thing is, when I do this with the pop, I know I put it in the screen for a finishing touch. I need something here for a finishing touch for my hot chocolate. And I know exactly what to do. There we go. Gourmet du Village Dinosaur Green Hot Chocolate. All right, we've tidied up the mess a little bit. 
We've given our hot cocoa a good minute to cool, so that means it is time to go in and try the dinosaur green hot cocoa. Yep, as I anticipated, it tastes like white chocolate hot cocoa. Although that uh, green coloring does give it a certain sparkle. Hmm. Not bad as white hot cocoa goes. It tastes like white chocolate. The whipped cream is giving it a slight coconut flavor. I don't know if it's just me or what, but the spray whipped cream like that, it always tastes a little bit like coconut. Yeah, but all in all, not too bad. A fairly average white chocolate flavored hot cocoa, just that the green coloring gives it a certain, a certain unique flair. All right, day two of Gourmet du Village Hot Chocolate. We got Maple Bacon Hot Chocolate. No doubt a relic of that time in the late 2000s when the internet started making bacon flavored everything. I like to emphasize the maple over maple bacon because something tells me I'm gonna taste more maple than bacon. So let's give her a shot, shall we? Okay, a little sniff test with the powder. Smells like regular hot cocoa. There we go. And because I learned nothing from yesterday, I've got another mug of uh, hot milk here, fresh from the microwave. Let's see how big a mess we're gonna make today. I gotta stop doing that, holy moly. Anyways, let's stir it all up. There we go. Gonna grab the rag right away and mop up. Oh my God. Okay, here we are. Our maple bacony hot cocoa, but it needs a finishing touch. I don't want the uh, whipped cream and its coconutty flavor to interfere today. So for our finishing touch today, a marshmallow. There we go. The maple bacon hot cocoa. Alrighty now, let's go in for a sip. Push the marshmallow out of the way. Really not tasting anything. Just tastes like regular hot cocoa. Maybe a, there's maybe like a faint hint of maple. Hmm. There we go. I'm getting a hint, not of the maple. Ah, there it is, the maple. It's a very subtle flavor almost like an aftertaste. And yeah, you know, a few episodes ago, I was trying that new maple bacon breakfast sandwich from Tim Hortons. That's what it tastes like. This tastes like the Tim Hortons maple bacon on their breakfast sandwiches. So yeah, the maple is a very subtle flavor. It takes a while to kick in, but it's there. So yeah, there we go. The maple bacon hot chocolate. The maple bacon flavor is there, but it's very subtle. It's overwhelmed by the chocolate. So it's nice, but you know, it's really not that different from regular hot cocoa. Oh, we got it. Hey, we got it. Hey, we got it. 
All right, next on the list of hot chocolates that caught my eye, we have Mermaid Purple Hot Chocolate. Uh, reading the fine print, this is a white hot chocolate. So uh, much like the dinosaur green from a couple days ago, I'm expecting that this is going to taste just like regular white hot chocolate, except, you know, they put a ton of food coloring in it to make it purple in color. So let us pop it open. Yep, definitely smells like a regular hot chocolate. There we go. Okay, now you're probably thinking, Mark, haven't you learned your lesson yet? You're gonna make a terrible mess when you try to fill the mug. Why don't you fill the mug with milk first, put that in the microwave, and then add the mix? Thing is, I don't like making hot chocolate like that. When you make hot chocolate like that, I find that most of the mix floats on top and it takes more effort to uh, mix it in and it doesn't mix in completely. So when you put the powder in first and then add the milk, it mixes all together nicely. Now, instead of another mug, I used my measuring cup. I've been practicing with tap water over the kitchen sink and if I do it fast enough, it won't spill. Okay, so let's see how this goes. We almost pulled it off. A lot less spillage there that time. Stir it up. Not too bad. It's a nice, well, kind of a purplish white. Let me just grab a napkin here and tidy up my little bit. Spillage wasn't that bad this time. Either I haven't mixed it up completely or it's got some blue sprinkles in it as well. Interesting. Anyways, let's go for the finishing touch. I think for this once again, we will go with the whipped cream. Lovely. That's what you call a mighty fine mug of hot chocolate right there. All right, so let's have a sip of our mermaid purple hot chocolate. Yep, as I expected. Tastes just like the green hot chocolate, which is a regular white hot chocolate. You know, cho hot chocolate that's made with white chocolate. But yeah, it's just, it's got a neat purple color to it. But other than that, just a regular mug of white hot chocolate. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad mug of white hot chocolate. It's just, uh, the novelty of the purple color is about all it has going for it. But still, on these cold November nights, it is a mighty fine mug of hot chocolate. It's also a Wednesday night, which means I'm going to go finish this off while watching the latest episode of Andor. Oh, we got it! Hey, we got it! Hey, we got it! Hot chocolate! All right, so tonight's offering, we have the banana hot chocolate. We got a nice little smiling monkey there on the packet. And it's banana hot chocolate, so I'm presuming it's a hot chocolate with a little bit of banana flavoring in it. So let's get going here. A little sniff test. Yep, smells like regular hot cocoa. There we go. Okay. We seem to have cracked the code yesterday. We got our measuring cup full of warm milk here, fresh from the microwave. Let's see if we can do this with minimal spilling. Not too bad. I think I did it so fast that most of the spilling came from splashing. Oh well. Stir it up. Ooh. You know what? Now that I've added the milk and I'm mixing it up, I can really smell the banana. Oh yeah. Really smell like banana flavored chewing gum there. There we go. Just gonna grab a napkin here and do a quick tidy up. There we go. And of course, let's not forget our finishing touch. 
we're going with a marshmallow tonight. There we are, banana hot cocoa. All right, time for a sip of our banana hot cocoa. Oh yeah. You can definitely taste the banana. Really tastes like just any kind of banana flavored candy you'd pick up down at the candy store. It's kind of overwhelming the chocolate flavor. So I'm not really tasting much of the chocolate. But all in all, it makes for a very unique and creamy hot cocoa. An intriguing change from regular hot chocolate. I just wish the uh, chocolate flavor was a little bit stronger so it would complement the banana flavoring a little bit better. Oh, we got it! Hey, we got it! Hey, we got it! Hot chocolate! Hot, hot. All right, and here we are. The final of the five flavors of Gourmet du Village hot chocolate that I wanted to try. We got white candy cane hot chocolate. So what I'm expecting here is a white hot chocolate with a hint of peppermint. So let's get to it, shall we? Tasty mug of hot cocoa. Yep. As expected, it is a white hot chocolate. Huh. I left my spoon over by the sink. I'll be right back. Not that you can see because you know I'm off camera. Got my spoon, got my cup of warm milk straight from the microwave. Let's see if we can do this with the least amount of spillage possible. Get a better grip and... We did it! Not a drop spilled! I am so proud of myself. There we go. We need our finishing touch. You know what? This is the last one. Let's really double up. Let's go with the marshmallow. And the whipped cream. Oh, nice and sugary. There we go. White candy cane hot chocolate. All right. White candy cane hot chocolate time. Mmm. Mmm. Yep, that's whipped cream, all right. Yep, as I expected. It's white hot chocolate with a hint of mint. I do like a minty hot chocolate, so I'm enjoying this so far. Yep, it's a very creamy hot chocolate. A very creamy white hot chocolate. Yeah, the mint's not as strong on that second sip. Who knows, with the marshmallow and the whipped cream, I might be drowning out the mint. Yep, there it is. The, uh, the mint flavor is very subtle, but it's there. I could do with a stronger mint flavor, but you know what? It's what I'll go with. Mm. So there we go. An entire week and a complete selection of Gourmet du Village hot chocolates. I really do enjoy them. They were quite nice. A nice little treat to find in your Christmas stocking. Now the question is, what, I'm gonna, what am I going to do with all those marshmallows? I bought an entire bag of marshmallows for these finishing touches and I only used three. Hmm. I still got that microwave s'more maker and we are coming up on Christmas. Maybe I can make s'mores with After Eight's turtles and an entire box of pot of gold. something to consider.